Hello you multi manxmen mostly mainstreamers and thank you to um, Michael Fortner for providing a malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy doing whiskey reviews and with the malt mention another malt moment has arrived and in particular this is Ralphie review 971. Um, this is a concluding mini series on decent quality Ralphie recommended non-age statement whiskies. Non-age statement whiskies, whether they are single malt or blended, are whiskies where the producers do not tell you how long the whiskey's been matured. So you've got to take it and trust that the re the price reflects the real value of the whiskies. Um, I think generally you can do, but as always, there are exceptions. So I'm going to take the cork off. I, I took the cork off that bottle far too fast. It's one of these fat, fat corks on a, a flask style of bottle where the neck of the bottle is quite wide. So generally it amplifies the popping sound when you open the bottle. And it also helps generate more squeak. You see, it's surface area. Oh, not too bad. This is Kill Home in Sanig, or Sanig. <coughs> Kill Home in is a distillery on Isla. It's a farm distillery and from the Rockside Farm. It opened in 2005 and at the time it started selling whiskey, it's been selling continually, continually, um, some pretty decent quality. Um, single malt, heavily peated Scotch whisky. So heavily peated tends to be the, the theme here. The peating levels of the barley are at the same as Ardbeg. So if you know your Ardbeg whisky, you know that's quite peaty. So it's that same volume of peatiness in the malted barley when they take their, their chemical readings. And um, I'm recommending this because it's a very decent whisky, and when you're looking at non-age statement whiskies, particularly in relation to the price, as you're assessing whether they are value or not, um, I, there's a number of things you need to check. One is, is it peated or not? Because peated whisky tends to have the full force phenolics more intact at a younger age, and if you really like that peated flavour, the younger you get it, the more intense it is. So that can be an appeal for a young non-age statement peated whiskey. And also the other thing you should be looking for are the size of casks used for maturation because if small casks are used in non-age statement whiskies, like quarter casks, rundlets, kiltikins, blood casks, these small ones where you've got a much higher to surface ratio of liquor inside the cask, then maturation is taking place quicker. So you're getting more sense of maturity at a younger age. Right. So I've just poured myself a wee dram and I want to tell you a bit more about this Kilhome and Sanig. The name Sanig comes from uh, a rocky promontory just beyond the distillery. So they're using local names as, as reference points for the styles of bottlings. But essentially what this means is that it's a combination of uh, bourbon matured peated Kilhoman and sherry cask matured peated Kilhoman um, with the sherry casks being most prominent making up at least two thirds of about 70% of the content and the remaining 30% is made up of ex-bourbon cask whiskies, which gives you the best of both cask styles. So a bourbon cask will give you vanilla notes and it will round things off and slightly sweeten a whiskey. Whereas the sherry casks, uh, even if they're the same size, will give you more raisiny notes. They'll give you some drier finish. They'll put some more tannin kick into the development and the finish of a single malt. Uh, and it says on the label, and I've got to say this because this is important, it says non-chill filtered, no colour added. And it's saying it where it really matters. This is a sign that the distillers are showing us, the customers, uh, malt mates, some respect, rather than disrespecting us by blindsiding us 
with a lack of information, which unfortunately can happen with too many brands out there. It's, it's just a sign of the times. They'll slowly change when they see the customers walking away because they're not informing people. Now, this is a very good in brand, Kilhoman, for informing people. And I'm going to come on to that in my Ralphie Review 971 Extras, which will be coming up after this specific re review of the whiskey. I want to also add that it's bottled at 46%. And um, let's see what it smells like. Creamy, slightly dry, syrupy vanilla. Underlying, prominent, youthful, bonfire chimney sooty type peatiness. So within the phenolic com component of this whiskey, the sensations of savoury and umami are well, um, savoury and a little bit of bitterness are quite prominent. Savoury and umami are roughly the same things when you're generalising it. A lovely, delicate, savoury nose on what's quite intense peatiness. If you're a peat head, you're going to love this. First contact, you're going to enjoy it particularly if you haven't tried this particular version before, because in my opinion, having tasted a few of the Kilhoman versions, this is probably your most consistent, best value version of Kilhoman that you can buy. It's getting the best of both worlds when it comes to the cask influence. Taste. A lovely, old-fashioned, sooty, coal smoke, industrial, phenolic intensity. It's nippy, it's dramatic, it's dynamic, it's slightly, it's reasonably intense, but it's not too violent with it. In fact, I would say, considering the phenolic levels in the malted barley, it's wonderfully restrained and articulate while maintaining an intensity because of the activeness of the casks that have been used to compose these batches, both the bourbon and the sherry casks, but particularly the bourbon casks. The bourbon casks are bringing in a sweetness and a softness to round off the astringency of the peat without going too far. So it balances up really, really well. I must say the blenders and whoever created this has done a really good job. A bit more in the taste. Menthol, minty, herbaceous, oh, iodine. Some wonderful natural chemical notes including garden cleaning chemicals one of which is called armillatox <laughs> this is why we should smell everything in our travels whether or not we can or shouldn't drink it taste it it's always good to smell stuff because it becomes a point of reference when it comes to dissecting, analysing and enjoying whisky because half the experience, one reason we enjoy whisky is because with single malts we're not knocking it back, we're not loading it with these designer ice cubes, we're not making these ridiculous wasteful co cocktails which squander the benefits of single malt but which are very profitable for style bars. Um, what we're doing is we're slowly sipping and we're doing it over time and we're nosing slowly and we're doing that over time. We're building up a full, very engaging, satisfying picture of the true holistic dynamic of a really well-made, characterful single malt scotch whisky, which is what scotch, single malt scotch whisky is really all about. Um, you can't rush quality and there's, there's no rush in preparing this takes years to prepare this, a lot of investment 
and we would be irresponsible just to glug it back, particularly at a whiskey festival, and go, oh, I love the peat, and then move on. As Because having not taken the time to get to know it. There's a lot to know here. A lot to know here. And particularly if you're an experienced peated whiskey fan, you're going to get an awful lot out of this. Now, we've added some water. The water, once you've added it, and I've added a full teaspoonful of water, is going to bring out the sweetness, particularly from the bourbon casks. You'll notice the nose settles down, it's a little earthier, a little bit more mineral, and minerality is an important constituent of Kilhoman signature. It really works well, and it's, it's also very telling that they bottle their whiskey at the distillery. And I didn't know this till recently because the last time I, he I was hearing about Kilhoman, they were thinking about it. Now they've followed through, and I've also heard a rumour, and it had, it's had been commented to me, that increasingly Kilhoman are malting their own barley because they're being denied supplies from the big corporate provider in the island. Um, and frankly, it may be a tough thing, but it's a good thing, because it will further consolidate and, and up, upscale the calibre of Kilhoman single malt. The fact that they are malting their own barley. Certainly, from what I'm aware, when it was local farm sourced grain, which would be slow going, growing, cold climate grain, wonderful for flavour, you find it in the Brochladi bottlings, the non age statement bottlings. Brochladi, by the way, is just down the road from Kilhoman, so they're next door neighbours. Um, you find that that intensity and the big, savoury, bitter surges of intense sensations that you get from lower yielding local barleys, which are just a kind of more old school strain, it really comes across very well in peated whiskey. It just gives it a whole depth. And the fact that they are using their own sourced farm water, right, at the farm for bottling, which is the same water they're using for distillation, it adds to what's called true provenance and not art applied marketing provenance, which can be rather fake. Let's have a taste. I'm enjoying this. Water just explodes the flavour. It uncoils the flavour in the whisky. The intensity remains super minty, super phenolic, super old chimney smoke industrial Victorian type flavours which I can tell you about but it's hard to describe really you've got to go to an old Victorian place and smell the bricks and the and the coal suit or ideally go to a traction engine rally because they're burning what's called finest Welsh coal to fire up the boilers of these fine old steam machines, these heritage machines, so much part of the British heritage and unfortunately just we don't see enough of them these days. And when you smell the 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 coke coming out the boiler and the chimney and you, you can sense the steaminess of these engines, that experience is what you're getting here to a certain extent. A wonderfully old-fashioned style of heavily peated whiskey from a very new distillery which can only happen when they're getting it right and investing in the quality of the product and my goodness they're certainly doing it here highly recommended for peat fans this is a must access single malt another taste because i tell you what having been researching gotta do it it's a bit of a chore at times but pff, i'm prepared to take accept the responsibility and take the weight on my shoulders for sharing the experience with you. Yeah, I do. And when you add some water, you'll find that over the next half hour, it goes through different stages as it opens up. You get the sweet stage, the dry stage, the citrus stage, and then you get this kind of savoury stage and you get a slightly smoky stage as well. So a very giving whiskey and one that um, I have to say, I won't really be sharing this bottle with many people. I'll be keeping it 
for myself, to myself, and enjoying it occasionally over the next year. Because it takes me a year to drink a good bottle of whiskey. Because the more intermittent you are when you experience a whiskey, the less able your senses are, particularly in the taste, of just getting used to it and getting overly familiarised with it. In other words, it keeps our palate fresh when we only have a sing good, good single malt whiskey occasionally. The length of that, no, oh, excuse me. Really long arrival. Wonderfully savoury. Almost slight cough mixture and nasal inhaler to clean out your sinuses. It's kind of that, thought of that sort of jig going on. So, I'm loving the jig. I'm loving the malt. I'm going to give this a mark. It's a really good mark actually. Um, it's one of my highest I've given for a while. This is how highly I rate this whiskey. 87 out of 100. Now for those of you following my new marking system, you'll say, oh my goodness, that's almost a 92. In the old scoring system. Um, yeah, yeah, it is actually. This is a malt mark. It's an integrity malt mark. I highly recommend you look out for this in your travels. It is well worth the investment for the experience, as will be my next review, Ralphie Review 971 Extras, in which I am going to tell you a little bit more about this, which you might not be aware of, but is very contemporary, very much a sign of the times, and very worthwhile for any distillery anywhere to invest in. No more spoilers. Where's my red clicker? My Clivey clicker, here it is. We're done and dusted. We'll see you soon, mate. Bye.